Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to answer the most frequent question that I get about Microsoft Word. So I'm going to show you how to create split headers or footers for that matter. I don't actually know what they're called, but uh, I prepared a finished document to show you what we're going for. When we're done, what we're going to have is we're going to have a document with Roman numerals as the headers on the first whatever pages, right? This one has Roman numeral one, and Roman numeral two. Then we get down to page three and we start counting again at one. And now we're just using uh, standard decimal numbers. All right, and uh, there's only two sets. So basically what I've got is I've got different headers in different sections of my document. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And this is actually an example of where you would do this. You've seen like the forward of a book or uh, something like this where the first pages are numbered, but it's not really the actual start of the book yet. So here we are at the unformatted document. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off by inserting some Roman numeral header page numbers uh, on the first page. You notice I'm on the first page of my document. Whenever I insert headers, I like to just double click in the top margin. That's kind of the shortcut way for getting into edit header. Sure, you can go insert header. That's kind of the more traditional way of doing it, but I like doing it that way. Now, if I want to insert a page number, then I'm going to head over in the header and footer group, page number. Do use current position. That's one of my best pieces of advice. Always current position. When you use these other guys, which look like they're about the right thing, bad things can happen. So I'm just going to go plain number, right? I'm not going to get too cute here. But if you remember, that's not what I wanted. I wanted a Roman numeral. So I'm going to fix that. And I'm going to fix that in the same menu I was looking at. Just like everything else in Word, if there's ever something you want to do that's not just staring you right in the face, look for the dialog box. Here's our format page numbers dialog box. I open this up, and it's not that intuitive. There's actually a drop-down menu here, and there's those Roman numerals I was looking for. All right, and I've got some other things going on in here, and we'll get into those in a minute. But for right now, that's all I want. And I click OK, and that doesn't particularly look like a Roman numeral, but that does. And that's good. And so in this document, I wanted my, my tables, basically the Roman numerals, and my actual document starts here. Uh-oh, that's not what we wanted at all, is it? Right, we're on page three, and I wanted this to be a one, and I want it just to be a normal one, not a Roman numeral one or anything like that. So I'm going to tell you that when you want different headers in different sections of your document, you're gonna need a section break. So I'm going to insert a section break anywhere between this page, basically page two and page three, indicating that I'm gonna be changing gears. Whenever I insert a section break, I'm gonna do that from the page layout tab. I'm gonna to go to breaks, and really I guess these are the ones I want. I want a section break, not a, not a new page break. Uh, one of the interesting thing about a break is that typically whenever we type or enter anything, it usually gets entered in front of the uh, insertion point. But when you insert a break, it actually goes behind. So if I go here, it's actually going to kick back up to the page before, which is probably where I want it. And I could really do next page or continuous just because I know how this is going to behave. I do that, nothing much happens, but you can see it right there. All right, so I did a section break, which is not the you know common sense thing to do. But now if I double click on this header, you notice it says header section two. Right, and everything above it says section one because it knows that there's a section break there. And on that note, you can get in some trouble sometimes if you accidentally have some section breaks. It might do some some things that you don't expect it to do. So I want to change this, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and page number. And guess what? Like uh, it's not apparent how I would switch gears here. So I'm going to go format page numbers. Oh, okay. So maybe all we want to do is switch it to standard numbering. The thing, I guess the trick on this one, is this right here. Continue from previous section is the default. Uh, I want to start at, and here's the question, what do I want to start at? In my example, I start at one. If I want to start at page 20, pretend I had like a 19 page forward or something, I'd go okay. And now I'm starting at 20, 20, 21, 22. Let's say, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? Well, it's pretty easy to fix. Let's just go back into that same dialog box and start at one, because that's what I did in my example. I click OK. Now I'm starting at one, two, three, and we've done exactly what we did in the example, but let's make sure that we didn't screw up our headers in the top half of the document. We didn't, right? Because we separated them with a section break. 
Now, I did have to go in here and this is how I kind of disconnected the two halves of the document because you could have section breaks all over the place, but if you don't change anything, you'll have the same headers throughout. That is the most common that I get in Word, a common question I get, and that is how it's done. Uh, it doesn't always go as according to plan, but uh, if you follow those steps, it should work. Just word of caution though, that's probably one of the more difficult things you'd ever have to do. Do make sure, and let me just put some footers in this document just to illustrate another point. Let's say I want to insert some footers in this document. So I'm going to do that under insert footer. Notice this is the more traditional way of doing things. I like to just do edit footers so I can type in whatever I'd like. Uh, for some reason, I'm on page three. I didn't really intend to be, but I am. Um, make sure that when you are working with headers and footers, particularly when you're trying to do something other than very vanilla plain things make sure that what you want isn't as simple as just checking one of these boxes up here oftentimes we think uh, I don't know I did, we just look past these but if you don't want a header on the first page then just click the box for different first page All right I'm on an odd page right now so if I type something like uh, let's put the date in here if I check this box for different odd even pages then I'm only gonna have uh, this footer on odd pages, right? Because I'm on an odd page right now. If I was on an even page and I checked this box, then I would only have these things on even pages. So order matters, which is kind of weird. So here's an odd page, page three. Let's go down to page four and guess what? No date and time, odd page. All right, so the point of this video was showing you how to do these split headers, but when you are working with headers and footers, do know that you have those uh, those check boxes available to you because a lot of times this is the easy solution to your problems but you know worst case you're gonna have to get in here and format page numbers or uh, whatever it is that you're working with thanks for watching and I'll see you soon